The United Nations Human Rights Office has joined calls for Zimbabwe's government to release more than 100 activists detained ahead of the coming Southern Africa Development Community SADC Summit. Columbus Mabunga reports from Horari, Zimbabwe, where opposition groups are welcoming the Human Rights Office call while the government digs in. Speaking to VOA Thursday via WhatsApp from Nairobi, UN Human Rights Office spokesperson Saif Mangango said his organization was monitoring the situation in Zimbabwe, where more than 100 activists have been detained ahead of the SADC summit this Saturday. Others are in hiding for fear of being arrested too. We at the UN Human Rights Office are concerned by reports of arrests, harassment and intimidation of human rights defenders and political activists in Zimbabwe in the lead-up to the SADC summit. We call for the immediate release of all those arbitrarily detained and for protection of civic space. Zimbabwe Lawyers for Human Rights says that since mid-June, there has been a wave of arrest of pro-democracy activists nationwide with some in hiding. The government says they were arrested for planning to protest at this weekend's SADC summit where 16 heads of state and government are expected in Harare. Kazembe Kazembe is Zimbabwe's Home Affairs Minister. While the freedom of expression is a fundamental right, it is paramount to observe that your enjoyment of that freedom should not be at the expense of the freedom of your fellow citizens. Freedom of expression does not and cannot meet the right to remove a democratically elected government for office and to replace it with people or a party elected by nobody. The opposition has never held any peaceful demonstrations. It is planned priorities of sections of the opposition who are agitated to stir civil unrest at a time focus should be on hosting the summit. We have always witnessed the pretense to mobilize for demonstrations around regional and international events. This SADC summit was therefore not going to be an exception. Promise Mkwananzi, the spokesman for Zimbabwe's main opposition party, the Citizens Coalition for Change, welcomed the statement by the UN Human Rights Office. We welcome the statement by the United Nations as an indicator that the crisis in Zimbabwe has transcended the borders of Zimbabwe of SADC and of the continent. And indeed, it is the, uh, the prerogative of the international institutions like the UN to hold Zimbabwe to account and to call for the hold of harassment and arrest of activists in Zimbabwe. We welcome the statement indeed. We ratify the statement. And indeed, it is true. Zimbabwe must release all political prisoners. And SADC must not be party to the persecution of Zimbabweans for the sake of hosting this summit. Alexander Lucero, a professor of politics at Africa University in Zimbabwe has advised for both the ruling ZADU-PF party and civic society groups. Civic society organizations, they also ought to change their game in as much as confronting uh, ZANU-PF is concerned. Uh, and on the other end, ZANU-PF should also uh, realize uh, that uh, confrontation with civil society at the end of the day the civil society, they have nothing to lose, but ZANPF, they have a country to run. Now we have a SADC summit, and it, it does not give a good picture to have the state always uh, at loggerheads uh, with certain protagonists uh, in the opposition and in the civil society. At the summit Saturday, Zimbabwe will assume SADC's chairmanship for the first time since the 16-nation bloc became a development community in 1992. Columbus Mavunga. A number of African countries and civil society organizations are pushing for inclusion of a text on human rights in the proposed treaty on global taxation, possibly forcing firms to adjust the way of conducting businesses. Ongoing discussions for the United Nations Tax Convention are due for the UN General Assembly this year. But the talk of linking tax and human rights is eliciting a debate with some seeing it as a cause and effect of bad governance. The African robbists have strongly supported inclusion of human rights as a guiding principle within the UN tax convention, noting that 32 different UN instruments 
have this provision. They add that just and progressive taxation is key to the realization of human rights. Negotiations for just taxation have been going on since September 2023 when developing countries began pushing for inclusion of the United Nations Framework Convention on International Tax Cooperation. The platform at the UN is supposed to provide them with an opportunity to discuss global tax rules on unequal footing. The current international tax regime doesn't include human rights as a principle. The reason we are correcting taxes is that we are correcting taxes from human beings to improve the lives of human beings, said Professor Atiya Waris, a UN independent expert on foreign debt and human rights. That is not the focus that is there right now. Yet that is the central focus for lots of treaties that are developed there. And so it is important that since that is the purpose of this organized UN assembly that we focus on human rights. Those pushing this say human rights should be part of the conversation because tax traditionally does not get discussed at the UN General Assembly. Led by debt and human rights experts, most of the developing countries want the proposed platform to include a reference to human rights obligations in the terms of reference to the Convention. The tax rules would enable them to address issues such as tax avoidance, double taxation, tax evasion, and illicit financial flaws. The tax conversion is significant because aggressive tax avoidance and tax aversion have a corrosive effect on public trust, financial integrity, the rule of law, and sustainable development across the globe. Globally, entities within the UN have recognized that taxes are relevant to human rights. While human rights would theoretically still be applicable to states, even if not referenced explicitly, this has not been happening in practice. Professor Waris urges that if human rights is put in the preamble, it may not have a lot of weight.